In a masterfully woven satirical tale of Asia's old rich, Kevin Kwan's Crazy Rich Asians has made it to the international bestsellers list and to the hearts of Filipino readers. In his latest book tour to Manila for the third and last installment for the series, Rich People Problems, Modern Living TV got to chit-chat with our favorite author about the story behind his books, growing up, and what being rich is really all about. Guys, we have the Kevin Kwan in the house. Well, Thank you. It's yeah. great to be here. Super excited. You know, the first time I read your book, Crazy Rich Asians, I was going to Beijing, so it was just in time. It was like perfect. It was the perfect read. And what I loved about it and the whole series is that you've managed to take something, really make something juicy, entertaining, but there's a lot of depth in, in the book. Thank you. Thanks for noticing this that. Kwan currently resides in Manhattan, New York, but he was born and raised in Singapore. Hence the deep-rooted passion for the Lion City's culture and the fascinating lives of the old rich. What got you started about writing this? So you were from Singapore and then you moved to New York, right? I wanted to tell my story, but this was the world I had grown up in. In New York, my life is extremely normal and extremely boring. You know, working in media, working in publishing, yeah. And then I would go on vacation with my mother to Hong Kong, and we would arrive in Hong Kong, and there would be four maids waiting to take out, pick up our luggage, you know, right, and I'd be like, right. no, 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 I'm getting the luggage, I'm yeah. a guy. Yeah. And then years would go by, and every time we went back to Asia, things would get more and more and more decadent, more out of control. And I would come back to New York or wherever I was telling stories, you know, to my American yeah. friends about all the, the crazy shock, things right? I witnessed, and no one would believe me. Yeah. And so I noticed that this was something that wasn't being covered in the West. Yeah. For Kwan, his background became an opportunity to break into the Western society and give them a glimpse of the Asian culture. Well, in general, I feel like, at least in the U.S., there's a, a major lack of Asian presence. No one was telling a story about contemporary Asia, the Asia I knew, the Asia I know very well. And so I just wanted to write about that. Kwan's writing is so rich in cultural subtexts that once you get to know the characters, you'll find yourself saying, hey, I know someone like that every so often. A big thing I noticed in the book, uh, which is quite true, is this generational gap, right? I've been around, you know, old, wealthy Chinese families in the, in the Philippines, and, you know, the really old money Chinese families, they're actually extremely discreet. Coming back here to Southeast Asia, where you do have old money, right? Yeah. Um, the younger generations are a lot flashier. Like you see these Instagram accounts of you these do. very wealthy young socialites from Singapore, from Thailand, and all of this. I mean, why people is... that would make my grandmother cringe. Yeah, exactly. But why is the <laughs> youth? Know? Why do you feel like the youth is so fat? Is it a, a culture thing? I think it's a culture thing, but I think it's also the exuberance of youth. And when you come from a background where there is money and there's money to spend, and you see what's around you in the media scape. When you turn on the TV and you see glamorous people, and you turn on, there's all these reality shows. That's you know, true. So it, it becomes all becomes laid out. They want to express themselves too, and I think it's not just in Asia because I'm seeing the same effect in Europe and in America. The new generation, the millennials, the 20-somethings, the yeah. teenagers, they're out there and they're Instagramming and right. showing off their bling and their lifestyles in a way that I would have never imagined possible. Oh my, my. But whether you're talking about fashion, money, or lifestyle for Kwan, there's a fine line between being wealthy and being tacky. When does wealth become tacky? And you said it's behavior. To me, what I value in people is, is their manners mm -hmm. and their integrity and really their humanity and how they behave. And I think, you know, how I was raised, you know, you're raised to be thoughtful, others before yourself. And then there are all these rules of manners that I think a lot of tacky people don't know about and so don't this ascribe to. So defines classy people, I guess. Yeah. It's these values and these virtues, right? At the end of the day, for Kwan, there's one thing money can't buy. Lastly, talk about love, which is the commodity that cannot be bought, right? This is in the book. Um, can you describe a little bit more about, you know, Astrid's search for love and yeah. this woman who seems like she's got everything but nothing? So this is a girl that seemingly has everything. Looks, she's got exquisite taste, exquisite clothes, and she's got the money to like fund that lifestyle. She comes from an old aristocratic family, and when people look at her, she's perfect and they don't see the internal turmoil yeah. and really the rich people problems that she has because so much of her life is dictated by her family. I think is actually truly a free spirit 
but she's very much a caged bird, caged in her couture. So what's the ultimate lesson that we can get from, from your books? How could we be crazy rich in life? Yeah. I think it's to be true to yourself and true to following your bliss and doing what you ultimately want to do. Thank you so much. Thank it's you, this was great. fun. Yeah, this is fun.